goat raising 101 is you need to go through your herd after that spring um, kidding season and you definitely want to get these guys banded and go through your herd try to figure out you know who's keepable who's not um, what bucks look uh, registered worthy and ones that are really breeding quality bucks so today we're going to be selecting breeding quality goats and banding the rest for goat sausage Now these bucks could be separated before now, but I like to see their full potential when they're uh, out here with the herd. Kind of gives you an idea, you know, how their temperament is and all that. He's going to be sticking around, going up on the hill with the bucks. Look at his blue eyes and he's pulled and he's pretty. He's got feet all over him, but we're going to go through here. We do warm them as we wean them, but we don't warm goats around here unless they are showing signs of needing it because they do build up a resistance to parasites so that buck's staying right there he's stunning see what I mean this is a buck you do not want to ban right here kind of gives you an idea of the difference he's a beauty he's starting to get all bucky that's one of our does we do not want him breeding so one thing you can look for is size some of these are older some of these are younger the, the smaller ones that are still growing they're not going to be as active wanting to breed so you can wait on them you definitely want to get these ones that are really see him they're pushing some does ready to be bred so we don't want that gives you an idea but he's a stunning guy but man you gotta love raising goats guys so let's go get the bander and let's get at it so we are out here with Miranda she's also as we're going to ban these bucks Right, Miranda? Yeah. What are you doing here with this silence? Can you tell everybody what we're doing? Um, silence is for lice and mites. So we treat our does. We're supposed to treat them kind of in January. I think we did February this year. And um, the babies are prone to getting it because they live in the straw in the bedding. Okay. So we're going to do one cc per 25 pounds, and it's just a liquid. And you basically put it, it needs skin contact, and you just start at the nape of the neck and then go down towards the base of the tail okay and where do you get silence from i think i ordered this on amazon okay actually. so you can get this stuff on amazon guys it works really great for the lice and mites all right so let's get let's talk about worming now like i said before we don't just go around worming the whole herd because goats build up a resistance and you want a resistance to your herd with when it comes to parasites goats can build that resistance some animals can't like pigs they don't have that resistance like goats do at time of banding and weaning we always warm the kids because kids at that stage or if you see a goat looking in furs looking rough they look like they need it then we'll hit them with it ivermectin um, is one we use a clear and a white you always want to use a clear and a white um, ivermectin is one cc per 36 pounds this is injectable and you can use the injectable orally, but it's one cc per 36 pounds. Now the white that we're gonna use is Safeguard. For 50 pounds, it's 1.2 milliliters. So we're gonna do a white and a clear. That's what you always wanna do. So let's get on to banding and get on to warming. One cc like, uh, is 36. He's a 50, we're gonna do 50 pounds. So we'll just do like 1.2. One and a half. One and a half. Yeah. Let's do one and a half. That'll work. We only use the needle to draw from because this is orally. So just pull the needle off and go to the next one. So we'll do 1.2 liquid safeguard, just a regular syringe. So let's do it. All right, so we caught this little guy and we're gonna give him his liquid. If he can. Just a little drench like that. Just hold his head like this. 
You just don't want a little time. And if you scream, stop. There we go. It's that simple. I love Miranda's gonna do the silence. I like the syringe that has the pointy thing on it. And then I just kind of push it down along the back and squeeze them out. Well, these aren't very sharp, but these are sheep and goat trimmers, and I get these at Tractor Supply, and they have them on Amazon too. I always take off that base of the hoof there. That should be in line with the... Hang on, buddy. You can use these to kind of clean off any dirt that's on there. Let's do it. You should start to see kind of a white hoof wall on there. <laughs> He's not liking this. He's big. The bigger they get, the harder it is to straddle them on your lap. You can put them in a, a stand if you have one. Yeah, these things are just not very sharp, but... And you don't want to go too far when you start seeing clear. You're getting towards the quick, and then it can draw blood, so kind of stop there. And see how much I'm taking off because you really want a straight line on the hoof so that they walk flat and that base of the hoof always grows up a lot more it seems like and you can kind of scrape off in between the hooves there too because when that builds up that causes hoof rot especially when it's a rainy season so just cleaning them out every few months when you do your trimming is a good idea interesting See, they look real nice, flat, and white. Use my glove too, but I like to line them up and make sure they kind of go together, and you get the hang of it as you practice. And if they bleed a little bit, you can use cornstarch um, or flour to kind of stop the bleeding if you don't have anything on hand for that. It happens sometimes you just nick or they jerk, and accidents happen. Nice. Good white outer wall there. Okay, see who's headbutting me and why. And if they get hoof rot, which is common, we use a Dr. Naylor's hoof and heel, and it's just a liquid, and you pour it on the base of the hoof, and just kind of hold their hoof off the ground for 30 seconds, and then they're good to go. It usually takes a couple treatments and then they're healed. The outside wall is still kind of tough. Quit! Bryn! you can do this in an area where goats aren't jacking with you, it'd probably be a lot easier. <laughs> you do want to try to clean dirt off before you make a cut because you can end up going too deep because you can't really see where you're cutting. And their feet are real important, especially in the wet season. Yeah. And grain. You want to tell them about grain, what it does? Grain causes hoof growth, like majorly. So when you grain your animals, you're going to get the hooves growing a lot faster. But we do grain for mamas until weaning usually, and then we do it in the winter when it's really cold. Bucks, we don't give grain because it causes stones. Yeah, so we... and let's, let's talk about that for a second, Miranda. Feeding your bucks grain, you know, it can kill them, right? We had it happen to us. Yeah one of our dynamite bucks learning learning experience um they really need grass hay forage and just yep. good mineral yep. and copper yeah so copper is boluses is another thing we do yep so you want to talk about that uh we do copper bolus once a year i think you can do it about every nine months you just kind of
kind of have to watch to see if they're deficient. And one of the signs is their tail will start to look like a fish. Um, like a fish it tail? looks fine, but when they get it, it'll start to kind of look like it's missing a space in between. Okay. And it kind of looks like a fish tail. Yeah. So when you start seeing that, then you're past due, <laughs> probably pretty far past due for copper. We do it about once a year, and there's different dosage for kids versus adults. We get Santa Cruz, and I get that on Amazon. We can put a link in the description. And you have to have a balling gun, basically, just to stick it in the back of their throat. I'll we'll have to do a video on that and make them swallow it. Just kind of rub on, close their mouth, rub on their throat, chase it with grain, and then they'll swallow. So that helps prevent parasites. So that's our main preventative here. Awesome. His brother keeps biting me on the back. And the ghost might bite you he in the butt. He wants his rubber back. He wants his rubber back. <laughs> Rubber's fixing to be not a bubba anymore. So <laughs> next step is banding. Let's get on to banding him. And you guys will get the point of what we're doing here today. All right, so get your uh, just a regular bander calf. They're actually 100, or uh, this is not recommended for calves over 250 pounds. We use these for calves and goats. All right, so what you need to do is take your bander, put your ring on just like that, and then you want to go like this. So the goal is put the male parts, testicles, through there, and the key is you want to make sure that you got both testicles. Feel with your fingers, because if one gets stuck down there, it's going to really hurt them and mess them up. So make sure both testicles are there. Pull it, push the band down a little bit and just pull out. It's that simple. Just make sure there's no nipples in there because if their nipples get stuck in there, it's not good. So just watch for that too. It's so easy. After you do it, you can do 100 in a day. It's just simple. So let's do it. All right, so what you want to do is, see these nipples right here, how close they are? You don't want those in there. So here, we're going to put this band around there. Pull up. And he's the perfect size to band. Now, if you have a goat that's younger, that's why I like to wait until they get bigger because you can't get around those balls very well. So you can see you got both balls in there, no nipples, pull down, let go, let go of the bander completely and grab your fingers and pull down. All right, so after he kicked the camera, <laughs> but you see the point, once you get the bander, let get to that point, let go of the bander, pull the band down and pull the bander out. And see, it should look just like this. No nipples in there, no nothing like that. And he'll be down for about a day. Not down, down, just not feeling real well. I mean, who would, right? So that's what it needs to look like. And in a few weeks, they'll fall off. So we're gonna talk about selection on your breeders, and that depends on the goals that you have. A lot of people like to race for dairy and compete in the milk testing and showing and such and such. Um, we don't do showing and we don't do necessarily milk testing. We do breed some of our does because they have nice, you know, bags and good teat, teat placement. Um, but when we do selection, a lot of times we'll pick some of the bigger bodied bucks to reserve. You don't really want something small unless you're looking uh, to downsize your herd. But we kind of like the bigger stature. And then another thing to consider is how the market's going. Like a lot of people like moon spots and they like pulled and they like blue eyes. And so some of those traits you can try to breed for. Um, and then hoof genetics is another thing that I think a lot of people don't consider. So as you're going through and trimming hooves on your kids, just kind of pay attention. Some of them just grow like crazy and they're funky and they kind of curve inward and they're just harder to trim. And if you look at this boy's uh, hooves, they haven't been trimmed yet. And he's, I don't know, maybe three months old now. Um, Two wow. and a half to three, and he's really in pretty good shape wow, they compared are. to some of the ones that we typically see. So mm -hmm. he's a really nice buck, and Very. also personality. Um, we usually socialize our goats, and this year we had so many and so much going on that we didn't really do that. But picking those that are like um, bucky and that want to breed, that's a good thing. But then also those who are um, just social, I guess, more social, or more apt to be social and less skittish. So. This guy meets the bill. He's blue-eyed, moon spots, big stature. Um, he's polled and good hoof genetics. Um, obviously the sire and dam, you know, good udder and all that kind of thing. So he's a keeper. <laughs> he even has a moon spot on his testicles. 
Yeah, and like <laughs> his, his, his whole butt. His whole butt is a moon spot, and, and pull his tail up. I mean, look at you can't see him from here. But yeah, see his testicles. He got a moon spotted <laughs> testicle. And just because he's heavily moon spotted does not mean that his offspring will be, because um, a lot of times we found taking two heavily moon spotted goats doesn't always even give you moon spotted kids. You just never know. Sometimes it does. So. And just because they're moon spotted don't mean they're a good goat. No. Let's get that out there. But who doesn't like cute? I mean, who doesn't like? You like a flashy herd. So. You know, yeah. coat is one thing, right, Miranda? Coat yeah. is just one thing out of many. Yeah, and, and some. I, I think it's a fad, right? I mean, a lot of people say moon spotted, blue eyes, unic. They're looking for a unicorn, yeah. but they don't ever look at the things like you're talking about with the feet. Um, Teat placement, you know, where the teeth, you know, look at a chart online. There's several of them out there. Warm resistance is another one. Yeah. How resistant are they to parasites, you know, and coxie and stuff like that? So, yeah, if you have a doe that struggles every year, you're probably not going to want to retain off her. You're going to want to cool that out of your herd, actually, because you want to aim for a, a herd that's resistant in general. <laughs> and there's always going to be a few that are heavy carriers. They always have heavy loads, and those are the ones you want to take out of your herd. Amen. And so this guy is named Titus. We named him Titus. Very strong name. Yeah. Um, and he's going to go up with our main bucks. And he's going up there today. We're going to warm him. And we are not banding him. So that's about it for Titus. We're going to carry him up and put him with his daddy. Yeah. That'll be interesting. We'll catch you guys up there. Uh, we forgot to talk about Coxie. Because that's a thing that goats can carry. And kids... It's kind of a silent kid killer so you really have to be on guard for that if you're ever questioning a kid like having parasite issues it's always best to just to do a stool sample to know what you're dealing with before you treat um, we don't do it unless we need to do it and so we just watch the stools and if they do end up with coxie we'll typically have to treat all the kids because they spread it around um, and what, what I mean by if they end up with it, if they carry a heavy load of it, because all these parasites are common, they have them. It's just a matter of how many, what load size they have. With Coxie, we use Sulfamed, um, and it's a five day treatment. So it's kind of a pain, but it works. Um, we've used Cord before on adult goats, but that's kind of a last resort. It's, it's very hardcore and it does the job, but it also inhibits thiamine production. So you have to give uh, vitamin B shots, thiamine, while you're treating with Corid. And I don't even know if kids can have that, honestly, but Sulfamed is usually our go-to for a coxie. A lot more safe. Yeah. Um, and if you do Corid, you're going to have to do thiamine injections. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the other thing Because it strips the B vitamins from them, right? Yeah, it inhibits the production of it, so and they have to have that to survive. Um, the other thing is if your goats have diarrhea or scours, um, that can be due to coxie, but it could also be due to eating the greens and their bodies adjusting to that diet. Anytime a goat has a diet change, especially heavy grain, they'll get diarrhea. Um, we usually just give apple cider vinegar in the water, but we also do it as a drench if we notice that issue. And that works really well, the drench yeah. does. So I've seen can... it actually beat coxie before. Yeah. Um, apple cider vinegar actually changes the environment of their gut and it actually keeps them from getting parasites too so very good thing to have the apple cider vinegar with the mother with the brags and another thing is salt block um one thing i learned about the salt block is we keep a salt block out uh you can see it over there guys right there over the years we learned that salt block um actually even with your cows even with ruminant animals having a salt block especially when they're eating a hay diet or even when they're on um, forage I still recommend salt um, you'll you'll see that goats go over there hitting the salt I'll, they'll even bite it when they need it real bad so definitely want to leave a salt block out for them at all times and, and it does help them gain weight also and minerals and a loose mineral um, let's talk about that real fast yeah so you also want to leave loose minerals out because any kind of deficiency will show up and you'll see signs in your goats in various ways they have to have minerals they don't get enough from forage um or you know it's not in the grain i don't think any grain is it yeah some grain the feed stores put mineral in but it's just not enough no so it's they just need not enough. yeah they need free choice they need to be able to go up and lick on it when they want it and we'd usually do free choice baking soda as well especially for the kids 
because when Helps they're out bloat. when they're out on heavy forage they can get bloated and they can die so you want to have baking soda out free choice for them to use as needed if a goat gets bloated the first thing you want to do is burp them um, the rumen's on the left side of the goat so you'll pat it yeah um, you'll just basically just be patting on the other side that's not the right side right it's, yeah, but you'll be patting of kind of back here and pushing that gas out when you see bloat and that's an emergency if they have bloat they'll be standing up and sitting down and crying and uncomfortable and you may even be able to see a distended belly and you have to burp them <laughs> and you'll Get hear them burp. burp burp immediately and keep burping and then we drench with some kind of oil just whatever oil like some olive people, oil yeah some people use mineral oil you can do olive oil just do a small drench and that helps lubricate and get that gas to come up. So that's another thing we do. Um, that's about it, I guess. Is it me or is this buck just one of the... He is one of the best that's been here all day. <laughs> you know? Okay, a lot of people like to use the FAMACHA scoring, um, which basically is a chart that shows the paleness or the pinkness of the gums or the eyelids. And it can be kind of deceptive it's not always 100% accurate but definitely if you see pale or white gums or eyelids you've got a worm load and again in that situation you really need to do I mean you can hit them with everything if it's a once a year thing for your herd but um, you really need to do a stool sample to see what you're working with in your area it's always the best bet um, pale gums is a true sign of worms or coxie yeah. coxie will give them a white gum I go by gums a lot or eyelids, but the gums are a for sure tell sign something's going wrong. When they get coxy, if it's extreme enough, they'll even go off feed. And you and need it, to separate. Yeah, you'll want to take them out of the herd because they'll spread it around, so put them in a stall or whatever. But because um, they can't, one can actually give your whole herd coxy, so you got to watch it. Yeah. And it's just part of farming, guys. Taking care of your animals, giving good care, and. Uh, treating them with the best respect you can right Miranda right <laughs> and these are these are dull because I've used them on a thousand goats by now and so we got to figure out how to sharpen these things I usually just buy a new pair every year they're like 20 bucks but look who's next to me I've been trying to pet her all morning Evie and look who's right here the whole time guys she's just wanting so much attention this is Addie look at her Miranda so anyways, right, so we're good. We're gonna go ahead and worm and do silence and um, this me. beautiful buck right here. So <coughs> all right, he's going with his daddy. Well, he's a pig in a way. <laughs> he's going in with his daddy in the big boy pen. Uh oh, they're gonna boss him a little bit in here. The man is ransom looking good. There's another pig, guys. They're ready for breakfast. He's a nice buck. Right, everyone so as we went through the herd we did some banding we did some warming we did some selecting on what bucks to keep and what bucks to band and Miranda did a really good job with the hoof trimming so if you ever need any advice on goats leave a comment in the comment section we'd be happy to help any of you guys at any time that you're in need so we love you guys stay tuned for next video subscribe like share these videos and we'll see you again at Zion's Gate Ranch Peace.